is a very, very windy day outside today. I was hoping to have the window open while I chatted with you today because I always love to listen to the birds in the background while I'm doing these. But it's so windy out today that I worried I would have way too much ambient noise in the recording so the window is closed up and things are nice and quiet I've got my coffee I've started trying to drink my coffee black because I go through an awful lot of milk here at the cottage <laughs> because I drink so much coffee and it is one of those things that uh, you know once you get used to it you kind of like it and and I you know I know I have lots of friends who drink their coffee black ginger Gerald drinks his coffee black in case you didn't know that now you know that about him um, and so, you know, with the amount of milk that I was going through and the fact that it can be difficult to keep milk in stock when, you know, going to the grocery store is a three-hour tour, I thought maybe I should make a bigger effort to start drinking it black. And I'm on day three. It's so far, so good. I've also cut down on my Diet Coke consumption because well that's a lot of aspartame and also lugging cases of pop to the cottage something else that would make life a little bit easier so there you go today is thursday august the oh dear august the 23rd Thursday, August 23rd, and I'm recording this a day ahead of time, a day before the Friday off-the-grid Friday night stitch-in party, which I fully intend to work on this project tomorrow night. This is Frederica by Carriage House Samplings and I'll show you a picture of the here's what she looks like she's a beauty I just think she's absolutely stunning and if you hadn't noticed yet I'm actually working on this upside down because sometimes when I start at the top, and, and I, frankly, I think that's probably why many times I will actually start in the bottom left corner. Because I always like to work towards the bottom of the frame. Because it's most comfortable for me. I'm a two-handed stitcher, and when my frame is up on the table or on my lap, this is just closer to where my arms are resting naturally. And so, you know, flipping it upside down is quite simple. And it's it's very easy I can I can stitch sideways as well all you do is you simply move the pattern in the orientation of which you're stitching so of course I'm holding my pattern upside down but this is very simple stuff you know this is just border and it's all diamonds and geometric and very very simple so once you've got your your color sorted out you're good to go so this is the top border at the moment that I'm stitching. I have taken a quick little clip of it in the correct orientation to insert at the beginning of this video. And I just couldn't help myself. I had to stitch this teeny little heart in the corner. I'm super excited to get to the bird. I really, really, really want to get to the bird. But I'm trying to do a little bit more of the fill-in work at the top. 
I, I'm always slightly paranoid that I'm going to miscount and end up in the wrong spot. So I like to have a solid foundation before I start traipsing all over the all over the place with my counting. You know, that's the one thing I always think of when I see uh, Michelle Bendy Stitchy. She calls herself a color finisher. Now, the pieces that I've been seeing on her Instagram lately and Facebook, you know, she seems to be finishing little motifs and whatnot. But when she works on big projects like, uh, what's the mirabilia that people are stitching right now? The Lady of the Flag? Our Lady of the Flag? Is that what it's called? Our Lady Liberty? I'm not exactly sure. I'm sorry that I don't know. Um, the correct title but I have a feeling you all know which one I mean she's stitching two versions of them and she when she was talking about them in her floss tube video and this was months ago keep in mind I am months behind on floss tube so this was when I was still watching current floss tube three months ago and she was discussing these two lady uh, ladies of the flag that she was working on and she was completing all of one color before moving on to the next. And I can remember sitting there with my mouth slightly open because I would just, I would get into so much trouble doing that because I think I would, I know that I would miscount. I wouldn't trust myself enough to be in the right place. Fascinating stuff, how we are all so, so similar, but so, so different in how we do things. <sighs> So I am stitching this on the most beautiful piece of 32 count um, even weave by, oh heavens above, picture this plus, doubloon is the colorway, and I am using DMC. I'll show you the, I'm sure it's okay, I'm going to show you the... Uh, color chart here. So this is, you know, these are always found on the back of the, of the pattern. I don't, I'm not giving anything away. Also, I know that usually when they sell patterns, they'll also give you a color list. So as you can see, it's charted for, um, oh, what is that? NPS. What is, I know the name of that needlepoint silk and NPS. Oh my goodness. It has completely escaped my memory what that is. Mostly, probably because I've never used it. Uh, and DMC. At the time that I kitted this up, my local needle workshop did not carry this particular brand. This is a silk. Uh, did not carry this silk. Needlepoint silk. Ha! Ah, look, the answer is right on the page. If I would just look. Needlepoint silk. And the original was stitched on a 40 count piece of linen from Lakeside Linens. So that's the cover model there. So that's a 40 count version. Mine is slightly bigger on a 32. Two strands of DMC. I love that they give you the stitch count here. Now this is the stitch count. So this, is, this would not be how big you would cut your fabric because you always want to give yourself an extra six inches. Well, four to six inches. I tend to err on the side of caution. So when you make the piece of fabric six inches bigger, you are giving yourself an extra three inches on all four sides of your piece. Now, as you can see, or not see, I think I've only started myself two inches in here instead of three, which pretty much guarantees that I'm gonna have a wider border over on my other side, but that's okay. It's all good. Two inches is still enough for framing. And I'm not sure why I did that. Most likely I was super excited about starting and didn't measure properly. Simply stuck my needle in and got going. That's probably what happened. I tend to do that. So I have a tag to answer today. I was sent a message from a fellow floss tuber, Kyle, who said that he had created a tag 
and he was going to record his video, his Stitch With Me video. And then he had tagged three other floss tubers at the end of his video to answer the tag. And since he knew that I was not watching floss tube and would probably miss it, he was kind enough to send me a message, I think on Instagram, and said, would you like to do it? Here are the questions if you're interested. And I said, sure. So his channel is called Stitched in Sound. And he also said that people were trying to figure out how to say his last name. So let's see if I can give it a go here. So it is uh, Kyle, and I'm gonna say Reikiemeyer. It's R-E-K-E-M-E-Y-E-R. Reikiemeyer, Reikiemeyer, is that, is that close? Hopefully I'm close. No one ever gets my last name right. Tell you that it's a it's a tricky one we don't usually correct people anymore <laughs> people get my first name wrong too it is Caroline that's my name but lots of people call me Carolyn not sure why it's definitely spelled Caroline But my last name isn't quite so simple. Anyway, so Kyle sent me this tag. The name of his floss tube channel is, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. It's called Stitching in Sound. I will leave a link to his channel in the drop down box below. I will also, um, what did he say here? I think he has a link to his questions in case you would like to also answer these on your videos as well. So there are a lot of questions here. Kyle, it does not look like Kyle does anything um, half measure. So he has a lot of questions. He has divided them into three categories. We have craft questions, music questions, and random questions. I have a funny, I'm not sure I'm gonna get through all of these questions today, only because knowing myself and how much I talk about everything and look at looking at my thing, I am already 15 minutes in and I haven't even started the tag yet. And I'm trying to keep these videos to not two hours long. I may only make it through the first section of questions today. We'll see, we'll see what I can do. And I'm already at the end of the length of my thread. Believe it or not, many of you know that I have a, a cone of DMC 310. I am actually not using that 310 on this particular piece. I Because I, I had four skeins of Sullivan's, Sullivan's thread that... I believe Kathy and Neil at Thread and I had given to me way back when to try out and see if I liked it because I think they were considering bringing it in to the shop and this was the project that I decided to try it out on. So uh, this is not DMC 310. I am never going to run out of DMC 310 but that's okay. It's a very useful thing to have. Lots of people have asked me where you can find spools of DMC 310 or, or other colors. Um, you know, Google is your friend and all you have to do is type into your search engine, uh, you know, uh, try, a few, try a few different things. I would start with cone of DMC 310 or spool of DMC 310. Chances are Pretty good, you're gonna find it on amazon.com or amazon.ca. I believe that is where I have seen it for sale. I believe you can buy black or white, maybe one or two other of you know the most popular colors. I'm not exactly sure. I bought that cone through my local needle workshop at least five years ago, and I'm not in need of any more. So I, that's my best advice to you where to look for it, either in uh, Canada or the States. 
and I would always try your local needle workshop first if you've got one because if they don't have it, if they don't stock it, which let's face it, they probably don't, they could probably order it for you through their distributors. Okay, so I am off to the races. So this is Sullivan's Black. And stitching with Sullivan's thread so far, you know, it's pretty comparable to DMC. I'd say it's pretty close. The thread maybe feels a little bit drier. Does that make sense? You know, there's a difference between Anchor and DMC, and I've always found Anchor to feel a little bit more dry in the hands as well. Uh, maybe that's because Sullivan's and Anchor use the same base. I don't know. Don't know. I'm not in the biz, so I don't know. All I know is that hand feel, it feels slightly drier than DMC, but I think the coverage is pretty darn good. I think the color is pretty rich. Uh, it glides nicely through the fabric. So no complaints. Anyways, and listen, look at that. Look at me. I still haven't answered a single question of Kyle's tag. And I'm still yakety yakking away. Okay, so question number one of the craft section says, when and why did you start your craft? I've answered this one a bunch of times before. Um, there I go saying, um, 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 um. I really, you know, normally I don't usually do that too much, so I'm not quite sure why I'm doing it today. When and why did you start your craft? So I've, I've told this story many times before, but lots of times we have new people joining us who are excited to find a community of stitchers. So I'll just briefly touch on uh, this story again. I was a teenager, young teenager, and my mom took me to uh, a, a museum. It was a local museum in the town where I was growing up. And it was a display of toys, vintage toys and activities that children would have done back in the olden day uh, to, you know, for, for recreation or learning. And, you know, I'm sure there were samplers on the wall. I'm also positive that I did not notice or recognize samplers on the wall for what they are or what they were, that they wouldn't have meant anything to me at the time. And I certainly don't remember uh, being inspired by anything like that. Though I can tell you now, I would certainly be drawn to them. But back then, I didn't have a clue what those sorts of things were. So in the gift shop, there was a, you know, a kit for sale, and my mother purchased it for me. I think she thought it might be something that would keep me occupied during summer vacation. And uh, it was a, a pin cushion. I, I've shown it before, but I, I, you know, I cannot remember what episode or what when I talked about it or showed it. My mother still has it. Um, it was a little tiny geometric design, and I stitched that up. And it took me two years because there was a mistake in the pattern that, as a new stitcher, I did not realize was there. And so I knew something was wrong, but I couldn't figure out how to fix it, and that was a problem. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna set myself over here with the black because I like to do that part last. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come in here and fill in these squares. Now, um, I, let me finish that story quickly and then I'll move into my next color of DMC. So I started it when I was, I don't know, 12? I think I was 12. It took me a couple of years to finish it because I was so frustrated, but eventually I did finish it. I followed the instructions to finish it into a pen cushion. My mother still has it. So that is the when and the why. Most likely because it was something to do during summer holiday. And I ended up really liking it. But I didn't come back to it full force until I was in university. Early university. And then it was game over. I was completely hooked. Okay, so I'm not sure you can actually tell. But in this border here... There are two different colors of this. There are two different shades of this gold. 
the one on the outside is a slightly brighter yellow and the one on the inside is a slightly warmer darker yellow and believe it or not the numbers are quite far away from each other but they're so similar so the one on the outside is six seven seven and the one on the inside is three zero four seven see how similar they are look at how similar they are so it isn't until I, I'm not even sure you can see it in the camera but one is just slightly brighter and lighter so it's um I like it it's a nice it's a very subtle effect but I like it I like it quite a bit all right I'm doing my usual trick of one really long strand folded in half with the needle in the middle this annoys lots of people who don't stitch this way because they feel like their needle is trapped, which it is. But I like it because it allows me to use up to the very, very, very end of the thread. Which, you know, more time stitching, less time threading. It's all good. And I'm usually pretty careful. I don't have to frog all that often, so it's all good. The other reason why I shouldn't really be advocating that you stitch this way because the fibers of the thread go a certain direction and so effectively I have one length of thread with the fibers going one way and of course because I've looped it around at the top with my needle in the middle the other side the other length of thread the fibers are going the opposite way so they're actually working against each other. So that's why what I'm doing is actually not the proper way to use floss. Um, the proper way to use floss, and this is a really good trick if you're brand new to stitching and you've never seen or heard of this before um, and you're you know, struggling with how do I get two strands of floss when there are six strands of floss in that length of DMC. How do I get them out? Okay, so simple, easy trick. And if you're doing it properly, you start with your length of six ends, kind of poke them at the end and you'll see they kind of separate there. See how they're coming kind of apart? Pinch the end of the length of six in one of your hands. So I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna pinch it in my left hand. I'm gonna take my right hand and I'm going to take one of those strands and, oops, I'm gonna keep a nice tight hold with my left hand and I'm going to pull it out. I'm gonna pull that one strand out. And as you can see, this all gets all bunched up, but not to worry, don't panic. When you pull it out, it all becomes, it goes back to the way it was. So you just smooth it out, smooth it all out again. Okay, so now I have five strands in my sixth length and I do it again. Making sure that you remember which side was which with your two strands. So which, which end did you pull out first? Because you want to if you're going to do it the proper way and not the way I'm doing with the fibers laying against each other in the wrong direction. I'm going to take one more out. I'm going to pull, pull, there it is. Okay. And then what I do, how I handle the extra thread, make sure that you smooth it all out again so there are no lumps or bumps or knots. And then I just wrap it around my fingers or I wind it back on the bobbin, keep it neat and tidy not full of knots. And then you take those two ends of floss that you took out that are now separate, like that, line them up, and then smooth them back out together. And now you're ready to stitch with two strands of floss. Oops, where'd it go? There we go. Now you're ready to stitch with two strands of floss that are not twisted around each other. That's why we take out one at a time they're, they're going to have a much better chance of lying nice and flat on your fabric 
neat and tidy. So that's the proper way to pull out two strands of floss if you're going to do things the right way. When I'm stitching for myself, and I'm not going to be entering this in any kind of contest. This is going to go on my wall and I want to be super quick and super frugal with my floss because I want to spend the most time stitching and not threading my needle. I loop it at the top so you can see I've got my needle is stuck there in the end. It's one really long piece of floss and I've just got my needle in the middle. And then I just go to town. Stitch, stitch, stitch. The only time that does not work, well, if you're going to cheat like that, the, the only time I do not do that ever, ever, ever is when I'm using a variegated floss, like cotton floss. You can't, obviously, right? Because the colors won't line up with each other. So you have to pull out two individual strands and use them together. Okay, I don't know how I got into that. Question number two on Kyle's list here his tag it is what is your favorite thing about your craft oh my goodness well I am a process stitcher so I would have to say that my favorite 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 thing about this what we do is the act of doing it the actual act of pulling the floss through the fabric it is my therapy. It calms me down, settles me down, makes me think, relaxes me. I love color, so I love to watch the color bring something to life. And that's probably why I have so many whips and it doesn't bother me one bit because it's a joy and there are so many beautiful things that I want to try and make and stitch and just you know derive pleasure from and of course designers keep coming out with new things every day and with social media and you can see everybody else's new start and it's so beautiful. No guilt. I love it. I love it all. But that's probably my favorite part. The fact that it's a bit of a refuge for me. Okay, question number three. Question three. What's my least favorite? Well, frogging, right? Making a mistake. Making a mistake and having to undo your work because then it feels a little bit like wasted time because there are so many other things that I want to move on to. I don't like to do it more than once. I don't like to stitch a project more than once. Question four, what horror story do you have involving your craft? For example, spilling coffee on an almost completed project. Well, that actually did happen to a friend of mine, and I, I, I can't remember, again, I can't remember what episode it is, but my friend Kathy, who had come over for a stitching day, did actually spill some coffee on her Northern Expressions Needlework Shades of Wine, and uh, it was gasp-worthy. And anyways, long story short, it all ended well. She managed to wash the coffee out of it. Uh, for myself, probably, you know, there were those five pieces that I did that's, that lined my stairwell, the landmark tapestry designs. And one of them, you know, there's a, there are borders around all of them and the borders are about this thick. So about this wide and this thick. And I had done a whole chunk of it. I'm going to say it was about this much so what five inches worth of border and it was wrong and I couldn't fudge it you couldn't fudge it because it was a geometric design it was very clear that it was wrong and I have no idea at all 
why it took me so long to notice that it was wrong. But what was really upsetting to me about that was that I had done most of it on vacation. And I always feel like vacation stitching is really special because there's a memory of your of your time put into your work. And I tend to remember what I was working on during certain times of my life. And so vacation stitching, I remember where I was and what I was doing. And I was so irritated that it felt like my memories of this holiday now would have memories of a few bad words and tremendous irritation because of how I mean it was solid it was full coverage these things it was full coverage and I had to rip out so much of it and because of the way that I stitch the way that I start and stop my thread and there was so much color in this it was a nightmare trying to pick it out because the Bargello tuck is how I start and stop my thread on the back which effectively creates you know not knots but the thread is looped around a few times and the thread is looped around into the other colors so it oh, it was not fun at all but that's okay I unpicked it I restitched it and it's now on my wall so that's good okay question five have you ever struggled to finish a project? Why do you think you struggled? Yes, and I can tell you exactly why. First, uh, and it's not a particular project, but I'll tell you, any project, any project that has a deadline, literally, doesn't matter if it's knitting, sewing, stitching. Sewing, well, that's a bit different because that's work. And, you know, when when sewing is your business and, uh, you tend to, you know, put on your big girl pants and just do it anyways. But when it's supposed to be something that is for fun, recreation and hobby, but it is an obligation because it's a gift or something, then, you know, my brain kicks in and I, it, 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 it the way my personality works, I almost don't want to finish it. So I've learned moving forward if I decide to make something for someone I will no longer tell them about it before it is completed and ready to give because then it's almost like I can trick myself into the f feeling like it's not you know an obligation Anywho, question six, where is your favorite place to do your craft? <sighs> it's like a Dr. Zeus book, you know, I could do my craft on a boat with a goat, etc., etc., in a house with a mouse. Um, anywhere and everywhere, my favorite place. I love stitching in bed. Oh, I love it, love it, love it, love it. My bed at home is slightly preferable to the bed here only because the headboard that I have at home has a better back to it the one here has a bit of a curve and so my pillows tend to disappear into it I like knitting in my bed here but stitching also my light is better at home so stitching in bed at home is my favorite place here my favorite place to stitch is on the couch I have a I have a well-worn spot on the couch and so I like to sit there with my stitching and my coffee and I have a little table beside me with everything set up just the way I like it and that's my favorite place to stitch okay what's next question seven do you remember how you felt when you completed your first project? Hmm, pretty accomplished, I'd say. It was the pincushion, and I actually finished it into a pincushion. So I made a little pillow, and yeah, I felt 
I felt really smart that I had that I had worked it out and and made such a a pretty thing all by myself. So yeah, accomplished. I think I was only 14, so you know, I felt I felt pretty good. Question 8. Are there any subjects you gravitate towards? Religion, Halloween, flowers, etc. Uh number 1, I'd have to say birds. Birds, birds, birds. Anything with a bird on it, I want it and I want to stitch it and I want to stitch all of them as fast as I can. Birds. I love birds. That's probably my favorite. Other than that, I love geometric designs. I love really enormous, huge projects. So I tend to gravitate towards things that are absolutely insane, insanely big, and take years to finish. I guess that's about it. I don't think I have a particular style or particular type of thing that I don't gravitate towards. Samplers are new for me. Looking forward to starting um, one of the ones that I got from Hands Across the Sea and also uh, the Scarlet House. That's where the Helen Virtue sampler came from that recently made a home in my stash and I am looking forward to that. So yeah, birds and nature. I like that. All right. Um, let's see. Number nine, what completed project would you most like to revisit in the future and would you make any changes? Well, like I said, I don't really want to stitch anything that I've stitched again. I don't think I would stitch any. I, I really, you know, it's kind of like TV shows. Once I've watched it once, there's only a few series that I'll watch again. Gilmore Girls is one of them. I could watch that over and over and over again, which to me is weird because that's so unlike me. Normally, you know, I watch it once and I don't ever want to watch it again. Same with stitching. I've stitched it once. Why would I want to stitch it again? So I don't know the answer to that question. I guess I don't really have one. Is there a project I wish I would make any changes? Not really. Not for my stitching stuff. That's, you know, anything that's that's been finished, I've been pretty thrilled with. So, I guess not. Question 10. The last question of the craft section. What is something about your craft you know now that you wish you knew when you first began? I wish I knew then how much fun I was going to have now. I wish I knew then how happy it was going to make me. Because I think that would have been something that, I don't know, would have brought me even more joy to know that it was going to be such an important part of my life when I was old because let's face it when you're 14 43 is old so I wish I knew then what a big part of my life it was going to be and all of the amazing people that were going to come into my life because of it I think that's probably the best part of it and that would have been cool to sort of have a little taste of the future back then and that's it for the craft section. That is it. And I am at ooh, over 40 minutes. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to just maybe oh, go on. I'll just do a few more black stitches here. I can't, I can't just not thread this in and then leave that alone. That'll bug me. So let's clip this thread. And then we'll move on. Now Kyle's second section is about music. I am probably not going to do a whole video on a music tag only because um, I'm a bit of a weirdo when it comes to music and I like anything and everything. Uh, I also have a music degree. I have a music, I have a performance degree in um, playing the flute. So I, I don't know, 
I kind of have different tastes than most people. Some of my stuff is eclectic and it runs the range from Johnny Cash to, to Depeche Mode. So, you know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that people really want to hear about that for an hour. So, uh, the next section is random. And so what I'll do is I, I think some of those questions are kind of fun. So I'm going to do some of the random questions for next Friday's episode and I'll blend that in. I'm going to go back to the video that I did where I had the 4,000 subscriber giveaway and I asked about, you know, what was your best tip or trick? I'm going to choose one of those to talk about just like today how I talked about pulling two threads out to, for you know that little trick I'll try and pick another little tip or trick to talk about next week as well as the last part of the tag okay so again this was Kyle's tag and again that is stitching in sound is his floss tube channel and I'm going to leave the link for that in my drop down box below. And I think he said that there is all of the questions for this tag can be found on the drop down box on his video. Pretty sure, anyways. So I'll put a link to that, excuse me, a link to that in my drop down box below. Thank you so much for all of your comments and questions and well wishes and your likes and your subscribes. I am just, I'm telling that 14 year old girl, she's having a lot of fun when she's a 43 year old old lady. And it's because of you guys, so much fun. Okay, that's it for me for today. Shockingly to me, Sunday is again high tea. So we have a new start to look forward to this weekend. I have mine all picked out. Are you joining in with me? Do you have a new start picked out? If you do, I'll see you on Sunday. As usual, there will be a giveaway. And then on Monday, I am preparing the video that I'm going to be putting out for what I've been working on for Evertote. It's coming out next week and I'm a little bit excited. So I'll see you on Sunday. Have a great weekend. Happy stitching.